first of many racing games was Motocross Maniacs, a time trial motorbike stunt game in the vein of Excitebike. Where that title had multiple races, this one is just a single competitor, although you can race a ghost bike of the time to beat. Where Excitebike was three dimensional, the Game Boy version is on a single plane. Here, your aim is to take on each course over two laps before the timer runs out. Scattered across the route are various pickups that extend your time, tire wear, and nitro boosts. The nitro is vital to getting through large parts of the tracks. There are loops and ramps aplenty, and your success or failure is determined by both your landing angle and how well you preserve the amount of nitro you have. If you run out, you may as well give up because you're not getting back in time and there are some jumps that you simply can't pass without the nitro. The problem therein being that there's no automatic restart, you have to wait for that timer to drop, so go for those pickups. You can also collect top speed boosts, but you lose these if you come off your bike. Hopefully, if you're a Game Boy fanatic, you can excuse poor graphics. Motocross Maniacs isn't a pretty game. The whole visage is a bland, unappealing hodgepodge of platforms floating in the ether of what looks like the loading program of the Matrix, white as far as you can see. When going up an incline, your bike floats a foot from the track, which seems like it would have been a perfectly easy fix that testing should have brought up. The music is pretty cool though, it serves as a good backdrop for a racing game, and the engine and boost sounds use the sound chip very effectively, so kudos there. Getting to grips with how the bike controls takes a while to get used to, but it's quite fun if you give it time. My word though, those time limits get really cruel after a while, to the point where you cannot afford to fall or miss a single time boost. There's a strange trick if you have a lot of nitro, where you rapidly press the B button and you're propelled rocket-like in whatever direction your bike is facing. It's very useful if you're running out of time towards the end. Either the gravity is a little strange or the air is really thick, because you slow down mid-jump in a way that doesn't feel Newtonian. It's a fun game, despite looking half-finished and half-tested. You probably won't beat this, but if you do, then believe me, you've truly earned that ending. Which is a shame, because there isn't one.